Morning, it's not long after 7am um, and I'll admit to not knowing really what it is that I'm doing today. I'm on my way to Bowood House where the uh, Outlaw Triathlon is going to be held in a few weeks time to meet up with Harry Palmer uh, and his girlfriend Lydia who I haven't met before and uh, Dan Ward who I haven't met either. I had a message at the end of last week from Dan saying uh, that Outlaw need uh, some photos done. Um, promo photos and some video I believe done and uh, would I would I tip up early on um, Monday morning with my bike and my wetsuit and my running kit uh, I'm assuming to do some photos and stuff and I think that uh, Lydia, Harry, Dan and me I don't know if there's going to be anybody else but that kind of covers a decent demographic from elite level uh, all the way down to um, the fat middle-aged demographic which is absolutely certainly what I'm there to make up the numbers on. But as to what we're actually doing, I don't know. I should be, I should really be packing for a house move uh, this morning, but you know, priorities and all that. Um, we'll see what it is that we're actually doing when we get there, but uh, that's, that's where I'm headed right now. to swim is in uh, the Stillwater Lake, uh, so there's no currents or anything like that to worry about. In terms of the water visibility, it wasn't particularly clear uh, the day we swam in it. It's quite a lot of sediment and mud in the bottom. And couple that with the fact that it's quite sheltered where it is, there's, uh, it's kind of in the dip at the bottom of Bowood House, so you're not going to have any major problems with kind of sunlight and stuff like that. Even if it is a really sunny day, it's quite sheltered. I wouldn't suggest wearing overly dark goggles for the swim. Couple that with the fact that the entire lake is tree-lined, um, you're not going to have any problems with sighting. I'm assuming they'll have uh, fairly sizable um, sighting boys that are going to be fluorescent and there won't be any kind of issues with um, skyline or sunshine behind it to, to hold you up uh, in terms of sighting. It is uh, just a pretty straightforward swim with kind of uh, four corners really to worry about and I'd imagine sighting for those would be fine. One thing I would say is uh, if there are any shallow bits I try and avoid uh, touching the bottom with your feet just that I got a few cuts and scrapes off some of the sharp stones that are in the bottom uh, but it should make for a very enjoyable very fast swim on the first leg. Right, so how was the swim? How was that? It was lovely yeah I could have stayed in there all day yeah. if I'm honest. Fantastic yeah. yeah. Yeah you had a good one didn't you? Yeah. Didn't even I'm get wet you were so fast. Yeah. So fast you didn't even get wet. Yeah. I had the hardest bit though. So yeah, the swim was really quite nice uh, on race day, that would be, be pretty good. And then we're just on the back end of the run course, how many laps is the run course actually? Uh, three. Three? I want to say three, I but three. I will put on the screen how many laps it is now. Oh, uh, you've got a post-production job to do now. You're going to put it And this is part of the run section here, so it's kind of a bit of a um, gravel path. Quite quick, but the run by no means is going to be rapid, um, it's going to be quite undulated, but very, very scenic, as you can see. The house back there. I think it's Jim quite a tester right next to me. Oh, I've got it, I've got it made because you're basically vlogging for me, so I don't have to do it. It's great. I think that's quite refreshing, though, isn't it? I'm a, I'm a bit bored of flat, fast courses all the time. Yeah. This, I think we'll still be pretty quick. This is quite firm. Yeah. But how, how different? Oh, yeah. How different. Oh, it's, it's nice. Awesome, it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. A bit of shade as well. If it's hot on the day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, the run doesn't come down here, right? <laughs> So to head out on the run course, you'll head back to Bowood House uh, and then run. Basically, it's like a big lap of the lake, um, a wide lap of the lake that's going anti-clockwise again. So you'll run out from Bowood House past the bottom of the lake. And the, the terrain that we could see was a mixture really of grass and quite hard packed gravel. I'd imagine if the weather hadn't been brilliant leading up to this, I might consider using a more kind of cushioned trail shoe. I used to use uh, Brooks Cascadia, which I really thought were great for that. They were quite a cushioned trail shoe. Whoa, it's a little deer. Scared the daylights out. But if the weather's been okay, I'd imagine that you'd be absolutely fine in any kind of uh, any kind of standard trainer. But uh, I, I would probably uh, probably 
think about something a little bit more traily if the weather's not been great it could be a bit muddy in, in certain spots at least from what we could work out on the run course anyway what we definitely saw though was um, decent hard packed gravel um, and some grassy sections and then you come uh, past the bottom of the lake and you'll return back as a, there's a sort of out and back bit before you turn and head back before the bottom of the uh, the bottom of the lake you'll get a nice view across the lake um, just before you come into the finish it's three laps um, so you'll be heading out and around this three times you'll certainly get to know it by then it's fairly undulating um, there's quite a bit of kind of up and down I wouldn't say this is going to be a particularly fast um, run course I'd say the bike and the, the swim are going to be where any time gains are made but I'll tell you what you're going to have a fantastic time running around these grounds it is absolutely stunning and we had a really lovely time uh, at Bowood being shown around by Marcus who works for the estate and he's in charge of looking after the whole place and um, was very kind and, and very very gracious to us during the day <laughs> triathletes cars eh so harry's a pro triathlete he's allowed an audi a4 <laughs> and obviously i've got a family this is a good triathlon wagon i have to say for races and stuff like that <laughs> so what we got here then do you want to talk us through your car dan uh, well it's just severely gone down in value because i took my bike out <laughs> <laughs> so this, this is, is this is the fake taxi this is uh, <laughs> <laughs> the passion wagon it's so actually a perfect vehicle uh, it's got about a million miles on the clock but you know what it's absolutely sound as a pound did you buy it with the sticker on yeah yeah and i got it from a from a fellow athlete who used it for a similar reason and uh, he didn't he used it because he was a taxi driver yeah well yeah i'm that and uh, it's got a roof rack it's got space for a bike in the back i'm not going to say it's forever but for now this is the, this is the machine and it costs less than a wheel of a bike <laughs> it's true you know, 500 pounds yeah, exactly. bargain like Paul. So, do I look like a chopper? Yeah, man, he's even got his stickers on the top, on his <laughs> helmet. I'll tell you what, on a normal day, this would be a lovely day for a bike ride. I know. Right then, chats, where are we going over there? So T1 will be a short kind of trot up the hill on the grass uh, up to Bowood House where you'll find your bike and you'll come out along the driveway and then turn left so you end up going uh, anti-clockwise around, uh, around the loop. Harry's used to having Will Cowan to to him round every, every race. <laughs> the car behind. There's always a car back. Yeah. It's a single loop, 89 kilometres, and uh, it looks fairly uh, fairly decent in terms of being able to get speed up and, and ride hard. Tricky for me to really be able to say whether I would do this on the TT or the road bike, but I think all things considered, from what we saw of the bike route, we didn't do all of it because of the inclement weather. Um, I would probably take my TT bike for this. Down at full race speed there. Uh, but there are a couple of climbs in here. None of them are significantly big. Uh, the biggest one being no, uh, 98 meters of elevation and the smallest one being 50 meters of elevation. Those are the ones that are listed. There are four of them, um, all between four and 5%. So nothing really sort of severe and that's gonna really cause you a problem. Um, but it's a relatively undulating course, um, sort of on A roads, at least to start with. So I'd imagine it's gonna be a fairly fast bike course. And judging what it's like around Wiltshire on a Sunday morning, it should be fairly quiet roads too. <laughs> Thanks, Harry. Cheers, mate. Appreciate it. Good to see you. And you. Good pleasure. Dan. Thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> My reflexes aren't that fast. I've used it all the time. I keep your bike. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like you're going to walk off without it. <laughs>